a premium hatch coming from Maruti finally. Lots riding on this car for the company and of course for the market too. It will take on the Hyundai i20 and the Honda Jazz. Here is my review. The most important car launch from Maruti Suzuki in a long while, that is the Baleno. The Baleno will be made primarily in India and eventually Suzuki sees it selling in 100 markets. The Baleno is being launched with three drive trains, the 1.2 petrol in manual and CVT avatars and the 1.3 DDIS diesel manual. I have now driven all three cars and the first impression is that this is an ample and spacious hatchback. The Baleno looks contemporary but not cute, sensible but not stylish, relevant but not ravishing. The higher trim variants do look better as they have a smattering of extra chrome, 16 inch alloy wheels instead of the 15 inch rims, a better designed headlamp cluster and LED daytime running lights. The sides of the car look like it must be the longest in its class but the fact is that the wheelbase is shorter than the Jazz and i20s at 2520 millimeters. The rear quarter glass sits after the rear door's shut line and this enhances the sense of space and airiness inside the cabin and that's very smart. So we can keep wondering why Maruti or in fact Suzuki didn't spend a little bit more time trying to make the car look really drop dead gorgeous. But there are good bits. The impression of length along the side as I've already mentioned and at the rear is where I think you have the nicest angle to view this car from. It does look very modern and contemporary at the back. And then we come to the name. Can I just put this out there? Please stop calling it Balino. It's not Baleno, it's not Balino, it's Baleno. The cabin is roomy and that is thanks to an intelligent layout and design. The i20 and Jazz also seem spacious, but the Baleno manages to come across as generous. The treatment is all black and the quality of materials is good. The amount of space in this cabin is the Baleno's trump card. You get a tremendous sense of space besides the actual physical space itself. Excellent leg room and very nice headroom as well. That sense of space as I've been saying because of uh, all the glass element and a slightly lower window sill without that rising belt line I think really really works. You do have uh, ample number of bottle holders and things like that around the car. The thing that I would have liked to have seen if I want to be too demanding maybe a drop down armrest but that's being picky. <laughs> What I would have liked though is uh, a rear AC vent, though you do get this uh, rear power outlet and um, a plumper seat cushion, somewhat like what you have on the Sierra's for instance, just would have been nicer on longer drives. But otherwise, full marks on the cabin. The Baleno has a very smartly designed and sexy looking instrument cluster. It's highlighted with a blue arc on top. The dials are simple but very sharp and in the top trims you get a TFT information display screen at the center. Now this 4.2 inch screen gives you trip information like distance, time taken, mileage etc. And also has real time mileage, distance to empty, an analog type clock display, outside temperature, gear change indicator and this, a real time torque and power output display. Yes, it's a gimmick, but boy, it works. Lower variants don't get the TFT screen, but do have a digital display unit with the usual trip computer information. The infotainment touch screen is a carryover from the S-Cross and works quite well. It offers navigation, a media player, and also responds to a few limited voice commands and touch inputs. It works well. But it could have been better with shortcut keys as you have to keep coming back to the main menu to navigate to different parts of it. An Indian industry first is the much hyped Apple CarPlay system, a big USP for the Baleno. I'm not sure it's a huge incentive to buy a Baleno though considering how many people use Android phones in India versus Apple, right? Even so, it's a cool new addition for sure and I did use Siri a lot during my drive. Play a song by Maroon 5. Okay, Maroon 5 coming up. The 
desktop trim also gives you keyless entry, reverse camera, a tilt and telescopic steering and a start-stop button. The diesel unit is the pick of the pack for me. I was reminded of what a revelation the Swift diesel had been when it first arrived. I'll never forget that first drive and even though the Baleno isn't quite as sporty, it gets close. And yes, that is pretty much the same engine too. Maruti could have opted for the 90 bhp version of this 1.3 litre engine but it stayed with 74 bhp for the higher mileage figure, a superb 27.39 km per litre. The diesel Baleno feels planted and is fun to drive with a sporty handling manner. The steering and suspension have been well worked out, giving the car a mature feel. Ride quality is pretty good front and back with the suspension being tuned for comfort but yet taut enough to throw this car around a bit. You get a tremendous amount of torque. The delivery of that torque is absolutely sublime and what's more it's available to you as low as 2000 rpm the peak torque and so drivability becomes so much more fun and uh, the beauty of it is that you get a nice satisfying feel without too many gear changes in city traffic and on the highway the car really sort of comes alive it's got a very different character to the petrol it feels more planted as well and overall from a handling drive rideability and even drive or ride feel point of view totally love the diesel it's the one in the pack that I wish also had a CVT. The diesel though puts out enough torque to easily accommodate a sixth gear, but let's get to the variant that does have the CVT option. The familiar 1.2 litre K series engine is well suited to the car. It's powerful enough too, and yes, comes with both options the 5 speed manual or the CVT both of which offer 21.4 kilometers to the litre. I did drive both versions and I have to say the manual is way more fun. The car responds better and quicker while the CVT is sluggish by comparison. So here's the thing with the CVT. It's a very pleasant car to drive and uh, that might sound like I'm trying to be um, a little bit sarcastic but I'm not because the whole idea is that the buyer profile for a car like the Baleno or in this segment is a city buyer. This is the kind of convenient option you require in the city and it's that one big chink in the i20's armor as well. You do need to have that credible automatic option. The Jazz has it, now the Baleno has it, so which means that of course at some point they will have to bring in an automatic. The downside? Well, I might want to buy a CVT and I might still want all the bells and whistles but Maruti has decided that it will play the price card on CVT and so which is why you only get it on the Delta variant which is uh, the second from the bottom of the total four variants. And I totally get that Maruti and a lot of car makers want to democratize the use of automatic and so which is why it's not being launched on the top variant anymore which attracts a lot of buyers with a better price. But what if I want to get the CVT and I want to pamper myself with all the bells and whistles? Well, I can't. And that is unfortunate. The good news though is that uh, all variants have safety, all the features as standard. Yep, Maruti has impressed me by making safety standard on the Baleno. Dual airbags, ABS and seat belts with pretensioners are standard. The Baleno also throws in a bit more on the higher trims with fog lights, auto headlamps, parking sensors, etc. But offering what I see as basic safety features as standard is a coup in this segment. Maruti needs the Baleno to be a big hit, especially for the sake of its Nexa dealer network. And so I think it needs to undercut the best-selling i20 and blow the competition out of the water. My gut tells me that you can expect very aggressive prices with the petrol likely starting at 5,20,000 and the diesel at 6,25,000 rupees ex showroom. And maybe Maruti could go even more aggressive than that. And so we possibly have a Baleno blockbuster coming soon.